everyone and welcome back to another deck guide today we're gonna to be taking a look at Scoia'tael and we're gonna be taking more specifically a look at dwarfs now dwarfs is an archetype that once upon a time was a shining beacon for Scoia'tael and then they got hit with a couple of nerfs and, and then they kind of crawl back into their mountain um where they lay in slumber for a while but it seems like maybe they're not too bad anymore with some of the changes or should i say one of the big changes they got um well one of the big little changes i guess you could say Bruvahug um is a very strong card in a dwarf deck and one of the main reasons why you would want to play dwarfs right now so let's go through everything discuss what everything does and uh, um, then get into some gameplay so first and foremost we have mahakam forge now this leader ability has two uh, main features the first being that it is going to basically give you a tempering now tempering will play for five points boost the card by five points and if it's a dwarf it'll give it two armor um you can convert that armor to points in a number of ways which i'll discuss in a bit uh the other thing is also has a passive ability um that boosts all or not boost but rather gives all the dwarfs in your deck one armor and that is very very important for two things one of them is Bruvahug. now Bruvahug, the star of the show gain one armor for every dwarf in your hand barricade which means while he has armor at the end of your turn boost all dwarves with armor on this row by one think of this card like gezris but for dwarves but even better with a Gez gezris without adrenaline you can play this card turn one if you want to you can play this card turn two you can play this card very early and that's quite important because this card can come down boost your entire row up almost every single turn and that is an insane amount of points um which this card can end up playing for so Brewerhug, star of the show and the main reason why you'd want to play this deck we also have monroe monroe is transformed two allied rowdy dwarfs into berserkers um you get dry dwarfs in a number of ways you get one rowdy dwarf from figures you get one rowdy dwarf from the chariot you also get three rowdy dwarfs from zoltan's company you get two rowdy dwarfs from zoltan warriors so a couple of ways to get rowdy dwarfs and um, you can transform them into the berserkers now why would you want to transform them into berserkers well first of all they're one point stronger than rowdy dwarfs and they also also have they also come with poor armor and every turn what this card does is it's going to damage itself um while it has armor and then do one damage to around enemy units it'll stop once it loses armor so it won't kill it won't damage itself into oblivion and suicide but it will basically transform basically turn its armor into points if you want to have a way to, have a way to convert armor to points um give armor to dwarven berserkers um zoltan basically has two abilities if you play him in the melee row which is what you're going to use him most of the time for it'll spawn two rowdy dwarfs on this row if you put him in the range row however he will um boost all allied rowdy dwarfs by two so if you have a lot of rowdy dwarfs you don't know what to do with them you could boost them up with zoltan otherwise play him on the melee row give yourself some rowdy dwarfs for one row and that is a nice way to get some bodies there um Brewery spoke about heatwave just a nice form of removal um so there's that we have call the forest we don't play near just because i wanted to try squeeze in a little bit more into the 5p slot so downgraded neuromancy for the call of the forest we also play never great injustice this is going to be able to play a bronze dwarf or crown splitter from your deck um this deck has so many dwarfs in it, so you've got many many targets you can you don't even have to keep it for volunteers you can play the volunteers from hand and then keep it for something like a magnum god it's perfectly fine this whole deck is dwarf so the condition is very easy the condition of course being if you want to get the the cleaver's muscle to spawn you need to have a dwarf on the board first but it's so easy to get a dwarf on the board this it basically has no condition in this deck um so that is quite nice as well um we also play yop and damage enemy by three and then barricade at the end of your turn lose all armor and boost self by however much armor he lost so another way to convert armor into points is with Yarpen. Gabor, gain resilience in the melee row, ranger gain immunity. So if you don't find him by round three, you can obviously just play him ranger and try to use him as an undirected amount of points. But if you do play him on melee row, you get resilience, which means he's going to carry over to the next round. And also whenever you play a dwarf, boost self by one. So he's also an engine in his own respect, which is quite nice. Um, figures spawn a rowdy dwarf for this row and it's a defender. So again, protects your row, helps you, you know, make sure some of your other engines survive. Xavier Morin, a pretty strong card on a dwarf deck so whenever this card um whenever you play a dwarf gain one armor and then while this card has armor at the end of your turn he'll boost self by one um so very easy to get this going and it's make sure probably not want to damage him because if they do damage him he's going to play more dwarfs and he's going to get more armor again anyway so you kind of don't want to damage him regardless um zoltan's company already spoke about that spawn three rowdy dwarfs mac and volunteers if you control a dwarf summon all copies of this units from your deck to this row so just a nice thinning card also put some more dwarf bodies on the board great target for Nova great injustice and um helps you swarm the board for things like your zoltan or not zoltan rather but for your bruver um we also play with the dwarven chariots now this is an interesting card spawns a rowdy dwarf on this row and then order ability 
Um, give an allied unit one armor. It has cooldown once. You can do this every turn. And you can convert those armor into points with a number of ways. One being Berserkers. Two being Yarpen. And three being if you give dwarfs that don't have armor anymore armor. That obviously enables Brubahoog to boost them up. So can be quite a nice card there. The Dwarven Berserker. Ray spoke about this. Basic convert your armor into points. Mahaka Marauder. Give vitality or gain vitality for two turns. Bonded. Gain vitality for four turns instead. So um, just a nice proactive six point play and the second one if you have one on the board will play for um eight points which is not too bad pirate ignition damage a random enemy unit and self by four now the nice thing about the pirate ignition in this deck is he comes down with three armor rather than two armor because of his leader ability so um actually seven for four essentially just face value and then obviously if you give it more armor he gets a little bit more value on top of that um minor boost an allied unit by two if it's a dwarf also give it two armor um Pretty self-explanatory. And then last but not least, Mahakam Guard. Boost self by the number of allied dwarfs, um, dwarf units on this row. Um, so, you know, you have a couple of dwarfs in the row. You play the Mahakam Guard and he can boost himself to quite a big amount of points. And this concerns whole deck as dwarfs. Mahakam Guard should actually play for a pretty fair amount of points um, most times. So, basically, that is the deck. Um, nothing too crazy. But Hook, of course, being quite actually contrary to what I just said quite a crazy card so um that's the deck and let us get into some games and see how the deck ends up performing okay so up against imposter now the problem with the imposter is they could do some cheeky things to us we gotta be careful um with the leader ability so let's see what we mulligan what we have to work with and then we can decide how things are gonna go probably gonna mulligan away um you for now and possibly gonna mulligan away also one of these um okay so how are we gonna start things off might just go dwarven chariot honestly and then play something like the pirate mission afterwards Okay, so it kills that. Locks this too, sure. I guess then we might end up playing this. Um, I'm a little bit concerned about Imposter's lead ability. It can do some pretty nasty things to us. It's going to go Neuromancy here onto Ramon. Um, okay. Quite aggressive. Very aggressive, in fact. So it's gonna be some kind of mid rangey deck by the looks of things. Uh -oh. We'll do that, give this some armor, and oh, it looks like I'm actually gonna take an early pass because I don't really see a way in which I'm gonna win this round when he's committing this hard to it. So all these on the board, yeah, that's probably just gonna be a pass from me. Um, yeah, I don't see how I'm winning this round, so I'm just gonna pass here. All the crossbowmen on the board. I don't really want to play into all of that. So I'm going to take the pass. So he wins round one. We got Ramon out of him. We got one use of his Neuromancy out of him, I guess. Um, very scary of his leader abilities. Leader ability can kind of screw up some things for me. Um, Groove, obviously, nice card. Going to mulligan away this. And possibly going to mulligan away this too. And we find the volunteer. Not the end of the world, but... I guess we'll start off with this. If he passes, I'm just going to play Call of Forest onto my um, Resilience Gavo, I think. But I don't... Okay, he's going to pass. Interesting. So let's just go ahead and do that. Call here onto the Gavo. And then get ourselves some nice little bit of carry for next round. Okay, so... Hopefully we can still find the Xavier. Hopefully there's still Yarpen we can draw into. We'd have to use the call round two, which is not ideal, but we get some Caravan, which is nice. Um, going to probably mulligan away this, and probably going to mulligan away Pirate Ignition as well. Yarpen is good. I don't think I want two of these. Um, okay. So probably going to start off with Defender, um, and then we'll see what we do from there onwards. So let's go Defender first. Protect our engines. And then maybe play something like Zolta next onto Monroe. 
It goes a Neuromancy here. It's going to play Mask Rebel. Okay, that's going to be an easy heat wave, I guess. Don't ask a lady her age. It's unbecoming. Surprise, you didn't actually go Leader Ability onto the Defend and also play the Mask Rebel at the same time. That could have really ended up hurting me. Plays another Thirsty Dame. Interesting. Mm, a superb specimen. Truly. So let's go ahead and do this. And then possibly going to play something like Monroe next. Um okay. Ooh, knew you yeah. got me raging. Rot toss have been quite nice value on these thirsty dames. In a day. I think now is probably the best time to go leader ability here. I'm assuming though what's going to happen is most likely he's going to poison this and then also use leader ability on my Bruver, I would expect. But this Bruver already coming down for quite a few points. We have a fairly big point lead, which is also quite nice. Here comes Rem I mean, Morale. That's kind of scary. So he goes leader ability on the Bruver, sure. Um, that is a very scary Morale. So, it looks like we're up against a poison-based deck. Interesting. I wonder if he's playing Caterine. Might very well be playing Caterine, honestly. Let's see, poison's that too. Point gap now. Starting to look a lot less appealing. Oh, okay. The Hemar. I guess we'll go ahead then and play this. And unfortunately for us, no Xavier. Another poison, wow. That is quite a bit of poison our opponent seems to have here. I'm gonna go ahead and play Justice, pull out some volunteers. And I guess I'm gonna armor this up. Probably gonna use Yarpen to kill off the Cupbearer, and then let's play this Magnum Guard as my last big finisher. Um, So, still getting some passive value. Um, these poisons actually played for a Pretty crazy amount of points, annoyingly for me. What is it now? And he is one I could look at my so kill that off and then play the Hackam God last. I hope it's enough. So right by ten points. Um this is gonna play for a lot too. So his last two cards are gonna be. Like a heat wave. Um, so down comes the 10 point guard. Needs to 13 points yet. Yeah, not that easy. 13 points, actually more than 13 points. 14 points to win. Invo is not going to be quite enough. So we just take the win here. This, these poisons actually played for quite a few points, especially these thirsty dames. But looks like we will take that win. Yeah, it looks like I put against the mirror. Mirror, mirror. Pride is all we've mirror, mirror on the wall. Who's the dwarfiest of them all? All right, let's see what happens in the mirror. Um, I think we're going to start off with the Gabor, probably. Um, actually, we don't have to, I suppose. We could actually keep it for round two. We'll see what he does and then decide. Um, maybe I'm just going to play my Xavier in round one. Uh, I'm not actually 100% sure. Hmm. Actually, a lot of approaches to do here. Yeah. Yeah, we'll play Gabo, honestly. And then threaten for a 2-0. I have a pretty decent looking hand to do so anyway. Okay, I'm gonna do this too then. And make sure I win round one if I'm gonna be committing the Gabo here or I've got to play this round deep enough where I can maybe threaten for him to go two cards down then. Ooh, okay. For you, pal, hmm. Red, come on! Who's fast? Well, that's kind of spooky. So we're both playing our gabbles here. What a mirror. 
This really is looking like it's going to turn out to be quite the mirror so far. Oh boy. Okay, well, I guess there's not really much incentive for me to keep going. Okay, so we both played exactly the same cards. I guess he gets a little more care than I do. So he's playing with Zoltan, it seems interesting. So he's got a little bit more carry over. Am I going to get bled? Hopefully I can find my heat wave. Um, Defender will be quite nice. Stops his heat wave, which will be good for me. Probably mulligan away this. Probably mulligan away one of these. I think I need two of them. Um, can play Call of Forest for Monroe, so that's nice. Don't have heat wave though, which is a bit annoying. So the question is, is he going to bleed? Looks like he might. Okay. That was a very bad pinks for him. Very good pinks for me though. So I guess we'll play Monroe here, and then we will transform those two. We're the best regiment in the whole plowing north. Play this, start feeding these armor, which is quite nice. Um. Takes the fast, interesting. Blood, blood. Okay, so we commit Zoltan, which is a bit more than what he commits the other Zoltan, not that one. Um, Bruver and Defender. Okay, so we got to make sure we just get our Bruver down as quickly as possible and try to get the most amount of points as we can. Heatwave, I guess we'll find some value. Um, yeah, his hand's probably as good as it's getting, honestly. So I guess we're going to keep this. And then we're probably going to start with Defender. Then we're probably going to play Bruver. Then we're probably going to play as many Dwarfs as quickly as we can. So our goal here is to get our dwarfs down as fast as humanly imaginable for Bruver. The earlier we get Bruver down, the better. And looks like he's going to go for the same thing. So let's play Bruver now. And I think I'm going to use my leaderability on this because the faster this gets value, the better for me. So we'll play that. And now Bruver can start doing his thing. Does the same thing. <laughs> this whole match has been just one absolute mirror. Oh, you've done it now. Wouldn't be surprised if our opponent does something similar to this, although he can't really do this, I guess, because he's already played the volunteers, so that's nice for me. Oh, I'm feeling sleepy, grumpy, dopey, and bashful. Yeah, do that. Dance, dance, dance with my death. Looks like a temp fate every passing day. And then I suppose we probably play this next. Damn the whole sun. So far, we've got ourselves a pretty fair lead, which is nice. Hopefully, this can ping off some of his armor, but it looks like his one pinged off my arm. Unfortunately, mine didn't quite do the same thing. Justice coming out here from him. We'll end up pulling out a minor. Actually, I could probably play Yarpa now. And Heatwave last one. I'll open up more space in his melee row. 
Okay, so we have ourselves a pretty big point gap. Looks like he's going to play Yarpen too. I must say, this has been quite a mirror. Pretty much identical players from both of us. And then I guess we heatwave this. I wouldn't be surprised if his last card is heatwave too. Uh, looks like it's not going to quite be heatwave. Yep, very, very similar gameplay from the both of us. Not really much different happening from both sides. All right, let's get into one more game and see how we do in the last one. Okay, looks like we're back up against Skellige. I wonder what kind of Skellige it's going to be. It is playing your scene ritual. Interesting. Um, going to be a lot of damage and removal. The damage is actually going to be quite annoying because the armor being lost makes the Bruva a lot worse. But um, we'll see. Mala going to wait probably one of these. And then we'll decide what we want to do. Starts with Sarah's. This is Lippy. Starting with Sarah's is a bit odd unless you're playing Lippy. I'm going to start with this, I think. And he doesn't want to remove this arm because if he removes his arm, it'll just come back. It's pretty difficult to get rid of this armor. It's just always coming back, basically, with all the dwarfs who play in this deck. Plays a gutting slash. Interesting. Um, I think I might want to go for Gabble, though. And start getting myself some nice carryover. Um, also an engine, so I kind of want to get it down early too. I wonder if you can kill that Gabo. Maybe I should have played the Miner first because Gabo here is relatively easy for him to kill. Oh, he's, oh it's Lippy. Okay, so it is Lippy. He's going to go for Blue Boy here. He might miss. Come on, let's go. Time to face our fears. Okay, he doesn't kill the Gabo, which is very good for me. That down. Okay, so he plays the snowdrop here. I think I am just gonna go ahead and play pyrotechnician next, possibly. Um Now our Gabba was back to full health, which is great. So he takes the heat wave on the Gabba. Okay, in that case, winning round one becomes a lot more difficult. Um, hmm. I wish I had heat wave to banish the Sarahs. Fortunately, I did not. I'm going to be aggressive here. Because if I win round one, I'm really happy. Especially if I win round one uneven. Against Lippy. There's Burner. Oh my goodness, that's so nice for him to find both of those. Alright, I guess at this point we're quite committed, so we're just going to go in with the Monroe, I suppose. And I guess we're transforming these two. Okay. So we take round one, a little bit expensive, um, but he also committed some good cards of his own. So I guess that's fine. Um, 
If I can play around Curse of Corruption, I can also then play around, um... Yeah, I guess I'll play around Curse of Corruption. This is a good hand. I think we're just gonna keep this. I might- maybe the Heatwave is actually bad now. Heatwave probably doesn't do anything anymore. Um, it would have been nice in the series, but whatever. So we get long round three. Long round three is great. I guess we just want to make sure we can find one or two of these. And then, as long as we play around the Curse of Corruption, I think we're okay. I guess, even if you play, I guess, it, actually, do I care about Curse of Corruption? So if I play Defender, he Curse of Corruption is Defender. And then I play Gab, uh, Bruva. It's hard for him to deal with Bruva. He can, in your man, see Hito, but then he can't take his Serra's out, which is kind of nice for me. Um, maybe I don't even care that much. I guess I could start with this, perhaps, and just... I could also just play Defender and Leader Ability onto... Actually, that's what I'm going to do. That's actually what I'm going to do here. So, I'm going to go Defender. And I am going to go ahead and use my Leader Ability onto the Rowdy Dwarf. And this way, if he does have Curse of Corruption, Curse of Corruption hits this. And then next time I'm going to play the River Hoog. And then I don't know how he's going to deal with that. He might be in for some big trouble. Okay, so he takes the Sarahs now. Good luck getting through my Bruva Hook, I guess. And this is going to play for quite a few points that he will not be able to really disrupt. Hey, listen here. Listen so let's well. get Justice down. And pull these two out. And now this Bruva is going to play for just so many points a turn. I'm not sure what our opponent's going to do about this. It's going to be kind of crazy. He's going to get the Berserker down next. And then, I mean, just, just so much passive value coming from this Bruva. Like, this is basically a guess that he can't really answer. I guess that's one annoying way he can do some amount of... Points, take away my armor, but sure. Um, so we'll play that, and then I guess if we get this down, we can give this armor again. What is it? Let's get this engine down and start giving our cards armor once more for this Bruver. Bruver is not going to be doing anything. So we'll give you armor, probably end up playing this. And this Bruva value just absolutely phenomenal. That is annoying though, pinging, my, pinging this and then hitting the, my, losing my armor is kind of annoying, but eh, it should be fine. We have just so much points from this Bruva. Bruva survives, just plays for such an extraordinary amount of points, it's kind of insane. Um, Now it comes a Kadoosh. Sure. What are you gonna do? Huh? Give that armor. I've got to take right. And yeah, looks like we're gonna be winning this game by quite a big amount, actually. Uh, last card might be Curse Corruption, doesn't even matter. If Bruva survives, this deck just has such an extraordinary amount of points. There just really isn't a whole lot your opponent can do if they don't have an answer for Bruva. Anyway, that is the deck. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Um Dwarfs, it, it didn't really change a whole lot, except they got Bruverhoog, and I must say, Bruverhoog is a really, really powerful card in a Dwarf deck, and it kind of makes you want to play this deck, so, I mean, if Dwarfs is your thing, um, you can try and give Dwarfs a go, Bruverhoog and his army of little people seem to be actually a lot better than they used to be, um, and maybe even competitive, so, hope you guys enjoyed the deck guide, I hope you guys um, liked it, and if you do have any questions regarding this deck, as always, feel free to ask um, in the comment section below, I'll be try to answer some questions if you guys have any. And I will see you guys on the next deck guide soon. Um, take care, everyone, and see you next time. Bye-bye.